Hello and welcome. We will be getting started in just a couple of minutes. Uh, my name is Andrew on Westover, and I'm the key pairing director of education and public engagement here at the New Museum. Um, and I want to welcome all of you to this digital space as we prepare to see a screening of several short films from Wang Ping. And here after that, a conversation between him and Kraus family curator, Gary Carrion Muriari. We are thrilled to be able to host this in anticipation of the exhibition, Your Silent Neighbor, which will be in the next calendar year. And we also want to take a moment to thank our sponsors for this program. Generous ongoing support is provided by the Charlotte and Bill Ford Artist Talk Fund, as well as the many uh, committees and members who provide support for the new museum's programming throughout the year. Thank you to all of you. So now I'd invite you to sit back and enjoy as we watch the screening. It'll be approximately 25 to 30 minutes of the video at, after which we'll have the conversation. Thanks again and look forward to seeing you shortly. Okay, great, fantastic. Hi. Um, so yeah. thank you, yeah, hello. Um, hello to you and hello to everyone. Um, I was just saying um, we're, really excited to be able to watch these, um, at least for many of us are these rarely seen early videos by Wang Ping, um, who was a standout from our 2000 team, 2018 New Museum Triennial and who we're very much looking forward to putting together a, a major solo show of his work at the New Museum next year. Um, you know, off the bat, just to start, you know, I think with some of these works and some people who maybe saw the work in the Triennial or um, the work he did for the Guggenheim, um, this is there's some kind of more unusual or surprising um, pieces where you know it's not purely animation, but there's also kind of live action video in terms of the music video or even in the other side. Um, maybe just to start, we could talk about you know your early days um, when you're just starting out to making making video and you know how you kind of settled upon a style. Like what were some of the influences and things that you were looking at, um, and you know how did some of these kind of more hybrid pieces come about? Um, oh, hi, everyone. Um, I think in my early days, I, um, my influence, I don't know, I, I read a lot of uh, comics from Japan when I grew up, um, but I don't, you know, I don't have any mind. I don't have any like art or design in my mind. Um, um, I don't, they are not my interest at all when I when I grew up, um, not until I guess when I need to find something to study, like I don't know what I gonna take, like and what course I I gonna take. So, um, and then I saw something called multimedia design, um, which they don't need any exam, like um, they just need you know assignments and homework um, to get the degree. So I just sign in and then and then as the study goes on i i get more interested in uh movies and music i guess and then i don't know i don't have much like influence to get me started but more like i think it's very organic like i wanted to make something using the you know, limited ability of the software I use from work um, and then just turn it into um, the software used it to be like making uh, motion graphics. So it's not about, you know, not, not only not, not used to make uh, animation, but and then I just turn it into because that's the only thing I know. And um, and then, of course, when the block, you know, the the when the blog started, like blog culture started, I write a story on, you know, upload it to my blog. Although there's like no one read it, but I still keep, you know, writing every day. Um, and then I just turned it into animation. Very like, you know, I, I don't have any um, gold in my mind. So, yeah. So it was really kind of an intuitive, something that intuitive that came about through the skills that you knew, but also like in the service of um, these narratives, which I think is, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense that, you know, blogs is where some of that writing came because there is a kind of confessional tone to a lot of your work, but it's like a, a tone where you're not entirely sure if it's fact or fiction or, 
you know, if the stories are about you or, you know, or just, uh, you know, a character in your mind or a kind of, you know, darker, more, you know, um, uh, more disturbing version of yourself, um, you know, is that something, this kind of, um, this blurring of fact and fiction or this kind of distortion of reality or this kind of like confusion around reality, was that something that um, came very quickly or do you feel like that, that kind of tone, you know, um, that I think you even see in the more recent videos, like the the fables and things like that. Do you do you think that is something you've you know built over time? Yeah, I think the the storytelling style get and uh, evolve over time. Um, like the fables, as you mentioned, I think it's the new kind of way of um, you know how I approach to tell a story, not from my own perspective, because when I try to write story in my blog, I always write from my own perspective, like how do you call that first person uh, mm -hmm. view? Like, um, so I, there's no other character talking to me in my work, uh, which makes sense later on because it gets me like I don't have to pay anyone to, you know, do the voiceover, like, except myself, I can do it by myself using, you know, my, uh, my phone to record my, 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 my voice. And then my story is first person. So I think it makes sense as well that I, I speak it myself. Um, so basically, when I look back to the writing in the blog, I think pretty much similar, very similar to to nowadays. You know the form nowadays um, the, uh, of my writing, but but fables is an, an, another form because I wanna, you know, I, I want a digital mother voice that talk to the kids um, mm -hmm. rather than you know telling my own. Uh, <laughs> fetish or like weird story of myself so um another thing another thing which is great is that is that um you know i it's always you know people come up to me you know they they have doubt you uh if if the story that i i'm telling is you know uh my my personal experience or not it's like is it true or not they always ask me that and i think that's the the most enjoying part for myself like i can put um anything like as honest as i can um that no one knows um that's my my true thoughts um where people may think that's a joke but maybe it's not so that's a good way of uh hiding you know to to speak more honestly is another way of hiding myself so I mean, at what point did you think, you know, I think with something like, um, you know, the fables, which you, you know, we didn't see here, but were part of the triennial or um, even something like Jungle of Desire, which is a, you know, kind of key, say, like mid period work for you that, um, you know, where the story of a housewife who um, becomes a sex worker, you know, like, at what point did you understand that this language of animation, you know, that has a kind of connection to childhood or like, you know, more, let's say lighter ideas could, could somehow disguise some of these ideas about social issues or, um, you know, the fables are also talking about like kind of, even though there are stories about chickens and cows and, and um, you know, uh, uh, cockroaches and things like that, they're also about the kind of, you know, real anxieties that I think probably young people in Hong Kong have these days. Like, I, I, was there a moment where that sort of clicked for you that you could use that something about the language of animation would allow you to tell these stories in different ways or at least get some of these ideas across? Um, I think there's no, not a click, but I think it's more like a, like a development or learning path of myself. Like, mm -hmm. um, like at the uh, in the in the screening, you know when you know that there's a work called Stop Peeping. It's about um, the girl next door. Um, but at that time, it's a uh, I, I I was still writing about 
um, story of one like like one very linear storyline and then um i think that work is I, I i done that work in 2014 i guess and then 2015 i that's the first time i get you know a chance to show uh in to be invited to to show in a in like a like a like an art space because before that i always just upload online um so 2015 which is the the last work in the at the screening um the other side which is the very first work i show in like a art space so i think that's the the transition of myself like um i by that time i still have like because because that's my first time so i have a very very uh cliche images uh or, or of art how art should be so I, I i remember i said to myself i need to write something other than you know being a perfect like being a like being a weird guy i should write something like more meaningful in 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 a way to to the surrounding so so that's my first try and then after that i kind of give up like and then and then just try to learn like 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 I'm learning how to mix them together. So now you can see like a it's like a cocktail, like a mixture of my personal fetish mixed with you know um, the the moaning of myself like to the social issues. Um, so there's not much like a like like a click, but there's like one point I realize animation have its own like. Not advantage, but characteristic. Like the character of of animation is that um, there was one show I did in two thousand seventeen, and then after that, there's like um, a critic or like a critic like talked to me, um, like like he he texts me, and then he he found me somewhere, and then we we have a long chat, and he said he didn't he got like offended by the animation but he also uh feels so weird that when people look at my work they they're smiling they're laughing at some some weird like terrible thoughts um so i think that's the click of myself like oh that's the animes that's the character of animation like people don't really always take it very seriously so like jump back to the first question like people always thought that's not my my thoughts or like that's that's just mm -hmm. a joke um i think that's the difference of making you know like live action movies you know if make if you know i i, I thought about like if i make my animation into live action movie that would be like not very appealing because it would be you know <laughs> terrible i don't want to watch it as well so yeah yeah and do you miss the do you miss the those days of like an audience who's you know the completely digital the completely online audience as opposed to now when you have this you know an audience in a museum or a gallery which is you know coming with different expectations or like a different kind of psychological experience you know in a person for like being in a video installation in a museum as opposed to like finding your video like stumbling upon your videos online um i wouldn't say i meet i miss digital audience like because i'm i think i'm still there so i don't <laughs> i don't they are still there i am still there so i uh yeah I, I don't i don't feel the differences very strongly like i don't have much uh feeling of 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 that kind of thing because i I'm still working on, you know, behind my computer, so I don't, I don't really, you know, feel the differences. Um, but expectation-wise, sometimes can get a little bit weird, you know, when because when when I do things like digitally, I I, I just I, I enjoy reading, you know, uh, comments that 
hates me. Like I really enjoy those. But you know, when you're dealing with, you know, openings or things like you have to be in real life, you you have to be there. Like let's say in a in a gallery show or museum show is opening, I have to be there. And then when I bump into like stranger, and they would have sort of like expectation of myself, like of me. You know, if I don't say anything weird or or funny, they would be like, they would have like a disappointed look. But you know, they are stranger to me, so I don't, I don't feel the need like I I say I say in the first place like weird stuff or like funny stuff. So that's one of the like weird experience uh, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe let's talk a little bit about some of the specific works that we screened tonight, because I think that those are some things that people maybe haven't seen yet. The um, can you maybe talk a little bit about the festival trailers and like you know like what, both like you know maybe what the assignment was and how you approach something like that. Also, like you know, there's a kind of the, the really wonderful kind of um, the physical humor that I think you find in even some of the pure animations. You see it in a really um, kind of playful way in those festival trailers like what what was what was that your process and your thinking behind those um yeah those those work i think is around 2014 and that's the festival i uh, in hong kong that's a uh, like a multimedia like they have films and 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 and, and animation category like uh, in festival in Hong Kong and um, yeah, I I I I did two years in a row uh, the for the fish show for them and I I don't know I mean they don't have any like they only have uh, the title or the slogan of the year the whole year so I have to make two video for them and uh, it's I don't know the only thing I remember is very. I always do it very last minute. Like <laughs> I shoot it like two days before the deadline or something like that. And other than other than that, I think I'm I was just having fun. I don't have any particular like thoughts about them. Um because I think for commercial work or you know, I feel like it's more like relaxing for me or like a like a leisure, like you know, I don't have to put much well, it sounds very wrong, but I don't. I don't feel like I have to put any like message in it, so I can purely enjoy doing animation or like visual stuff. Um, so it's really relaxing for me. Um, so I don't have any thought about that, you know, compared to my personal work, showing it the you know shows. Yeah, um, but but, but the, you know, I think it seems like you you feel like you're having more, you know, I um. It, of course, you did work in commercial animation for you know a period of time too uh, before, you know, you really kind of took off as an artist. Um, did you find like there was a space to have kind of fun when you were doing that kind of work? You know, in the same way that you did with these festival trailers, like you mean which which like when one when you were you, when you were doing like commercial animation, you know, before you were you know uh, before your own work was that let's say out in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, because I think there's, you know, I think for some, there, there's a sort of reputation with commercial animation that it is a real slog, you know, to to do some of that, that kind of work. Um, was that the case for you? Slog. What What is this? Slug? Oh, uh, like yeah. a, like a real tough, like a real um, tiring and boring, <laughs> like a tiring and boring oh. job. No, I think. Oh, but one thing that I consider when I, you know, take um, like commercial work is that I have, you know, fully freedom to do whatever I want. You know, if they have guideline or style guide, I wouldn't take it. It's not like I, it's not like I don't need money, but I, I just feel like I cannot fulfill their need because my, as I always said, you know, my animation skill is not very good. So I don't feel like I can fulfill the commercial visual 
you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I can't do any, you know, bigger production. So, because I don't have a team. Uh, so I can do really like person, personal stylish work. Um, so if they, you know, if I, 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 I take, I need to, you know, consider a commercial job, I would be like, you know, I need hundred percent, you know, freedom. I can do whatever I want. So I don't feel any frustration to deal with the, you know, client or what, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I, I feel like, yeah, I never bump into any, um, you know, um, uh, rejection, I guess, when I submit, you know, the final, or maybe I submit very late, so they don't have a chance to, you know, correct <laughs> anything. So, so, um, yeah. And also I, you know, when I look back at the screening, there's like one, uh, <laughs> very very like nonsense video about you know when i'm be uh, when i was in korea um i think that's a fun experience because i've always wanted to do not not i i've always like have a desire to to make things you know using my it's not like a performance but but using my you know body experience like maybe maybe i've done enough work in a in a in a virtual you know world so i mm -hmm. I, I just want some warmth from from <laughs> anything like at anything because the computer is really cold when i work alone and so i always i don't know i always have a desire to to do something you know like a like a performance or like you know using my like personal experience to get get myself out there to make something you know have interaction with anyone you know um but i also don't have the courage and i guess i don't have the talent and courage to get started so that was the only one time i do something like really silly <laughs> um and i really enjoy that I like also how you you know uh, visited the fortune teller in that one, and also this idea that you do like seek other people to kind of understand you know yourself or your own future or your you know the world in some way. And um, you know I could say we we also we you <laughs> tried to use um, let's say the uh, uh, fortune tellers or psychics and other you know and other examples in, of things lately. You know whether the title for your um, show in Miami or um, uh, the psychic that we right. what we are using in our exhibition catalog to speak to some artists behind the <laughs> grave. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I when I look back, I didn't realize I visit quite a few times fortune teller, like, but no, but not one single time is for for real, like for serious. Every time is for mm. like only for work. Um, yeah. yeah, only for work. And I remember when I return my fortune telling to the Korean fortune teller. I remember the local, um, are quite upset about my, my action. They think that's not, that's terrible, terrible. That's a terrible things to do. Like, uh, you know, sneaking, sneaking the, the, the fortune telling <laughs> into, um, her door. And, um, yeah, they think that's, that's terrible. Um, but she told me, she told me I'm going to get married like two years ago. Um, but it's unfortunate. Are, are you it's approaching not, the deadline? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately it's not, but it's only like cost me five bucks. So <laughs> what do I expect? So not yeah. too much. Fun. Um, so what about the, the music video? I think that's, you know, what, what was, um, that is obviously a much, was it a, a much more collaborative process? Like how much input, you know, um, in terms of like the, the approach came from the band and how much, you know, um, or did you feel like you were, it, it reflects you as opposed to the music, I guess. Um, I, it's funny because when I move into animation um i mean i don't make any this i don't make the decision you know changing my text to animation until one time 
um, like um, there's like an independent band in Hong Kong that contact me through social media. Like they ask me if I'm interested to, you know, make make a, a music video for them. By that time, I I've never done any like shooting or or animation at all. I've only you know put out some writing and a little bit of illustration that I try to learn how to draw, but I don't know why they 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 ask you know they they invite me to do that for the collaboration, and uh, it was very interesting because I listen to that label and those band all the time and. So I get to know them, and I get, and then I, so that's the first time I started to oh, let's use this software to make animation because, yeah, to make a music video. So, and then following that, I made a few more music video for other you know independent bands in Hong Kong, and um, you know they, same as you know that's not a commercial job, but they. Also, don't have any limitation, or because I guess they, we are pretty similar. Like we all do do that for you know for our hobbies. You know, animation and writing. By that time, for me, it's only hobbies. I mean, still hobbies, but like you know. So, but we all have a full time job, and that's what we do. Like I make animation, and they make you know music, uh, in their spare time. So. There's no, you know, no stress at all. You know, the, they just want, you know, music video. So I make them. And when doing the process, I think I don't really, you know, care about the their lyrics at like too much because I think I just want to do my own thing. And then you know, the visual and the lyrics or the song put thing together can, you know, can be a third thing. So I don't really care. Like you know, it's not like. I have to tell the story from you know from the text you know transitioning transition you know transition to to visual. I don't th I I think that's kind of boring. So I I just want to make something you know different and then like I mean different from their their song. So and then just put it together. I think that would be like you know if I'm lucky there would be like chemistry. But if not, I had my fun. So I don't really care. <laughs> And uh, I don't think they care as well. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the perfect collaboration. Then, if, if neither side is, yeah. is cares too much, huh? um, are you still writing? You know, uh, on a daily basis now. Do you is that still like a, the foundational part of of how you're working these days? Um, I don't. I no. I I don't. I never like literally write. I don't even have a pen in my studio, so I don't write. <laughs> Uh, like I don't, but yeah, I just remember things when I, you know, when I, as the day pass, I, I think the writing process for me is more like, it's more like being alive, like just living, like a living process. If I, you know, stay alive, stay active every day and then things would come up and then, you know, I would write, you know, combined the so-called diary together into you know write it into a storyline um um you know before the deadline so so uh <laughs> you know if there's no deadline i would just you know uh how do you call that like filling up you know um memories so um right. but nowadays i mean is you know my my process i you know sometimes i really need to be out there like you know, eating or buying stuff. But nowadays, you know, uh, it's like a, such a weird time that uh, we don't get to see friends a lot. I don't get to, you know, go out a lot. So, you know, um, it feels like, you know, it's not much, you know, inspiring stuff going on right now, um, except the reality, you know, more like reality stuff we are dealing with uh, is much stronger or affecting um, people. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, do, do you feel, I'm, I don't, I don't want to go on too much longer, but I, do you feel like 
you know, I think in some of the characters in a lot of your videos, there is a kind of like, you know, um, this sort of like anxiety, like the sort of isolation, the anxiety of isolation that these characters feel, you know, somehow becomes manifest in their body, like in, you know, like anxiety around their own bodies, um, you know, the struggle to connect like physically and emotionally is such a big, you know, part of your character's work. Do you find it resonant with how, you know, so much, so many of us are having to live at this moment, like, you know, both, you know, isolated, but also like very, you know, now connected, you know, in a bizarre digital way all the time. And, you know, um, and, you know, conscious of our bodies and our, you know, our, like, um, you know, our weaknesses and our desires in a really, in a, a much more intense way because of what the world, I mean, do, does it, does it make you look differently about some of your older work even? Um, um I, to be honest, I feel like the, the pace of the world now is like closer to my, my personal pace. Um, so I feel like, you know, I've been always not isolating, but you know, I, you know, my working process is like, I work alone and then, um, I would stay in the studio for a very long time, like every day by myself. So it's pretty much, you know, um, especially pretty much like I feel very similar to my daily life. It's more, I, I think, I guess it's more like other people, um, maybe like you, you know, feeling more <laughs> closer to my, more like to my work, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, so it's, it's not a question to me, but rather than to other like audience, I guess I, I don't feel different because it's very similar to my, um, I don't feel, you know, but I, I get to, I get a lot of, uh, you know, you know, friends told me, you know, my friend, some of my friends, they work in like, let's say in the office like every day and they feel really weird to be, you know, spending time at, at home they they feel weird to you know they're not able to feel their position like how do they position or find things to do at home they 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 feel weird when when they have so much time by themselves and i think that's quite interesting because you know uh you know let's say my friend they some of my friends they, they always like thinking you know telling me about like they want to do something like let's say their hobbies or let, let's say they, they want to go fishing but they cannot do it because they have the day job and all that and um but now when they get a chance to you know get more free time um and they wouldn't and they also wouldn't do it they wouldn't start so i guess that's and then they they would tell me they they don't know what to do you know when when they have such you know huge amount of free time by themselves they cannot adjust their position and i think that's that's quite funny maybe i guess i don't know but maybe that's the the fantasy of you know you have the distance to your dream you know we need the the fantasy of the and the distance from our dream but when the dream getting closer you feel like oh you know weird or like yeah. that's not my dream i don't want to do that like you know um maybe they should take maybe they should take up animation that might be the the solution that they can then they can <laughs> animate the things that they're not actually doing but anyway i think we should <laughs> probably end and now um but thank you for this and we're um it was great to see all those works and we're really looking forward to your show next year and you know hopefully seeing each other in person at some point in the future would be great so so thanks for your time yeah, and thank I you think, for getting up yeah. early. Of course, everybody, it's very early in Hong Kong, so we're really grateful for you to to get up and spend some time with us. Yeah, I feel like very, I feel like super healthy today, like getting up so early. That's very good. So, it's, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That's, all right, take care. Okay, have a great day, and thank you all for yeah, tuning bye. in. Bye. Um,